¿Cuál es el camino más rápido al hospital? Ahí viene. ¿Cómo que viene? Si sí, ahí viene. No, 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 no respira, ¡Ah! respira. ¡Ah! Respira. No debería ser un parto tener un teléfono que sea rápido. Deberías estar con Metro PCS, con una rapidísima red 4G LTE en todo el país. Con datos, llamadas y textos sin límites, 40 dólares y punto. Son gemelos. Sin sorpresas. Hasta los impuestos y tarifas están incluidos. 40 dólares y punto. I need music to get through my day, definitely. I had this one book of CDs where I just, I memorized every single song on every single CD and I would like do all the different cover art for every single one. I literally like sing on the top of my lungs in my car, I don't care, I jam out and um, I even pretend I'm like, I don't even care if everybody else driving by is watching me, let them watch me, I'm, I'm gonna entertain them too. They're gonna have a better time in traffic because they can watch me sing this. I wish I was musically talented, but I always joke that all of, like my musical and domestic talents got funneled into athletics, like he only had so many points to pick on your Tony Hawk player, you know, and it all got funneled to one side, and I have all these skills on the side and just choose nothing on the other side. What drives me is, is the way I was raised. Ever since I was a little kid, I, I even though I had a bunch of problems, I, I, I didn't know it. My family never let me know that I was developmentally behind all my sisters. And, and they just put it in my head that, you know, you're meant to do something extraordinary. I've had no reason to change my mind about that. I've learned that blood makes you related, but loyalty makes you family. You're at your best when you're happy, and you're at your best when you're sur surrounded by people you can trust. You know, just having um, teammates and coaches isn't enough. I mean, these people have to be my family. I need to have people like that surrounding me in order to reach my full potential. And when I'm in a coaching position, I try to create that sense of family for, for my athletes as well. I have inherent respect for every opponent, whether I like them or not. The person that you are fighting is always the person that you have the most in common with than anyone else in the room. I have to understand what this person's intentions are and what they're thinking and how I can outsmart them. And I have to be able to understand their thought process in order to beat them. There's a lot of inner conflict that goes on. And as someone that you understand so much, you have to beat so badly that they will never, ever want to face you again. I think actually my inability to define success is why I keep trying to do so much more all the time. At first it was just making sure that my dog had food, and then it was to make sure that I, I didn't fall into debt. So I was like, oh, then I want to be a USC champion, and then that wasn't enough, and then defending it wasn't enough, and then, then making it harder and going doing movies at the same time, it wasn't enough. I'm still trying to figure out what success is because Success will be when I'm finally satisfied.
What's the fastest way to the hospital? It's coming. What do you mean it's coming? I'm pushing, but it's too slow. Oh, baby, breathe. Whew. At times like these, you shouldn't go slow. You should be fast. With Metro's Lightning Fast Nationwide 4G LTE Network. $40, period. Metro PCS. Explore the ZTE Concord 2. It's optimal for the first-time smartphone buyer. Ideal for those ready to upgrade to 4G speeds. It's a perfect pairing for those seeking dependability and a great fit for buyers with affordability in mind. This phone is a solid choice for anyone looking for great performance, not superfluous features. Meet the ZTE Concord 2, the smart match. to go. I mean, that's it. There's no turning back. Am I ready? Did I do enough? Scared, anxiety, crazy. You ready to go. You put in the work. You know, you've seen this fight replayed a million times in your head. It's 15 minutes, man. There's something about the walkout that gives you the beginning of what the fight is going to be. It gives you the first steps and you see the fighter, you see their confidence, you see whether or not they're pumped up or they're calm. The, the way they handle the entrance into the octagon sets the tone. Whether or not they're theatrical about it, whether or not they're really aware of it, or whether they're really focused on the fight. The walkout is largely what, what draws guys uh, to the sport. Usually when you're sitting at home as a, as a viewer and thinking, I want to get in that, whatever inspired you uh, was generally something within that walkout. You're warmed up, you're ready. Bert Young, we rolling. <sighs> Adrenaline dump, sweaty, crazy. Put my hat on, get ready, tell the guys, let's go. Count okay, busy when we get in that corner. I'm going to pour a little water so you can wash the feet, make sure you're nice and gripped. So you're going to rip it tonight. The walkout for me is assessing what my uh, athlete is doing. You know, are they a little too uh, immobile? Are they too amped up? And just making corrections and getting them in the right state of mind. And then at that point, kind of the ball's already in the air. If you're a golfer, the, you've swung and the ball is in the air, and you know, there's not much you can do at that point, but just make sure that uh, everything's right and ready to go. A lot of fights are won, you know, between that dressing room area and that walkout. Tyron is, to me, he's a gifted athlete. He's a very special athlete, a very special person. He's a little bit more cerebral. He likes to stay in his own zone, and when the crowd hits him, he's not affected by the crowd. I'm probably doing a couple prayers. You know, I usually do Psalm 23 as I walk out, so I'll, I'll mouth that. I'll think that if you ever play back and look at my lips, that's what I'm saying. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's do it, baby, come on. My coaches are really just reassuring me. They know I'm an um, internally motivated person. They don't have to slap me in the face. They don't have to curse me out. They know that I'm in this thing as a spiritual warrior. We roll As soon as I step out that door, that's when the change for me begins. There's a lot of people back there and you just stay focused and they bring you to the curtain. And uh, once you go through the curtain, that's when you're in the actual arena. You're feeling the, the energy from the fans. You can see the octagon, the smells change, the sounds change. Uh, you've got your music playing, whatever that may be. But this isn't that pleasant of a, of a process. And I think it's a lot more fun to view from a fan standpoint than to actually be in it. But it's, it's important, and when you're when you're doing some type of visualization and you're you're preparing for the night, uh, you got to prepare for that walkout. All you gotta do is touch them. Calm, cool, collected. After the fight, they should be like Anthony Pettis. Who? All you. Before the walkout, that's when I'm I'm an insecure person. You know, I'm like, man, this guy can knock me out. This guy could beat me. I can lose in front of my family and friends. But once that music comes out, I'm just like a different person. Like my alter ego comes out. I'm just like a whole new person. It's crazy. You're doubting yourself, you're doubting yourself, you're doubting yourself, and then you get in front of everybody and confidence just like overcomes me. When I finally get to the, the spot uh, where they put the Vaseline on you, before they'll Vaseline you, they'll tell you, you know, turn and hug your, your corner man. And I, I always tell them that the next person I touch, I'm going to destroy. Just put the Vaseline on. We did our hugs and our wish you wells uh, earlier, but uh, at, at that moment, I'm ready to go. And I used to be scared of the walkout and those feelings, but those are the feelings that people strive for that you, you know they say they don't come anymore you get them when your baby's born or you your kid graduate college you know but we get them five times a year
As you use your MetroPCS phone, you can enjoy the convenience of Wi-Fi calling. To do so, you must provide an E911 address. Setting your E911 address allows emergency fire and police departments to respond to 911 calls placed using Wi-Fi. It's easy to set up your E911 address from your MetroPCS handset. Go to Apps and select the My Metro app. In My Metro, click the menu button in the upper left-hand corner. In the menu under Tools, select E911 address. On the E911 address page, enter your street address and city. Press the field for state and select yours from the menu that appears. Lastly, enter your zip code and press submit. If you need assistance with setting up your E911 address, you can always call customer service at star 611 or 1-888-863-8768.
Now on Metro Minute, learn how to do cool things with your Metro PCS phone. To use your phone as an internet connection for another device, just open Applications and select Mobile Hotspot. Turn Mobile Hotspot on. The first time you use it, you'll need to enter a password for your hotspot. Now, on your other device, find the Wi-Fi button and turn it on so you can connect to your mobile hotspot. Select your phone from the list of available Wi-Fi connections and enter the password. Here's a tip. Mobile hotspot consumes more battery. Connect your phone to a charger to extend battery life. What makes the UFC so interesting to people, I think, is it, it's exciting. And there's an energy around it with everybody working there. Whether you're in the truck, whether you're on the sideline, whether you're a PA or whatever, you're energized. If there's a camera here, we make sure it's up in this corner so that we got the whole clear area to walk. And once they start walking, they shouldn't have to stop. Right? Shouldn't break their momentum. Everything we do in that back area is precisely timed. Everyone that's affiliated with the truck and the backstage and the cameras and the crew, they all know that schedule. And that's a schedule we have to stick to in the back here. We got 10 minutes for that next fight, baby. I stand in the middle of the hall, baby, so everybody can hear me. And you know what? When they hear it, they know it's time for them to go to work. We roll Me yelling and screaming and trying to motivate them with my voice is just that. Time to go to work, baby. We rolling! Yeah! When the fighter leaves the dressing room, headed for the cage, that adrenaline is pumping. He's in another world. He has flipped that whole script. He really doesn't know where he's going, but he knows what he's about to do. So basically, I have to make sure that he gets from the dressing room to the cage without anybody getting in the way, without him stepping over or tripping over anybody. That's why I use that towel. Before that light comes on, I stand in front of them with that towel. And when that light comes on, they see nothing, but they still can see that towel flipping all over the place. This is different. This isn't like you're going to work and you're ready for a big meeting. You're actually going to fight one-on-one -on -one in front of 20,000 people and you know, worldwide millions of people. So that is the moment right there. When they come out, that's their attitude, that's their, uh, their swagger or lack of swagger. As they hit that front of house, when they come out of that tunnel and it opens up and you reveal that you want people to go insane. You want to be able to translate that through your coverage, you know, whether it's steady cams walking up and trucking up and big jittas and jibbing in the air, kind of floating and flying over people. My job is to pick that shot sequence that's going to translate that energy and that excitement from that in-house show onto the television show. Tyron Woodley is about as big as you will ever see a man who weighs in at 170 pounds compete the next day. My goal during the walkout is to set the tone, what I think a fighter's strengths are, how they match up. I'm a huge fan, so I, I also realize that I am representing not just the UFC, but I'm also representing the hardcore fans at home. It's my obligation to do these fights justice. It's not just about the contest itself. For me, that walk-in is about building up the hype and getting all the fans at home excited. Because that's me, I'm them. I just am the lucky guy that gets to talk.